Hello and welcome back if you've been here before. This episode is on Tavita, not on Susanna. Susanna will be brought back here after probably two episodes, this one and the next one. This episode's on the transformation of this boat, Tavita. It'll be hopefully a pretty snazzy episode where she's just sort of transformed in a fairly short order. So hopefully that will happen and we can get her in the water and go sailing whilst bringing Susanna down to here and then I can restore her in a sort of nicer place where I'm not losing the summer and wishing I was just out sailing all the time. I can actually focus on the boat properly. So that's what I'm hoping. Hopefully this is a good episode and hope you enjoy it. Cheers. So as we look around on the outside of the boat, you'll see how the paint is crazed just through age and it's flaking and whatnot. I'm hoping as it is sanded, it comes back to fairly smooth. I have a interface pad on my sander to make it soft and to, to go with the curves of the boat a little bit more. Hopefully I can just bring that back with a, a fairly, you know, soft-ish grit. So anyway, hopefully I'll sand that down, look good. And as for the timber, this is greyed out through age. You can see where it's been covered and the varnish is still pretty good, the timber under. It's going to be difficult to balance these two out again, but hopefully I can do it with, with a combination of sand and a back maybe some axillic acid to take out the grey and to really bring revive the wood again so this is going to be a little bit of a mission but hopefully i'll get this wood back to looking absolutely beautiful again so yeah let's just get the hull done get it nice and sanded and then we can see where we go from there here we go so what she looks like in a couple of weeks Hopefully, there won't be any burning off on this one. Um, I think the deck's going to need, I think the deck's going to be a bit of a chore to be honest, but the hull itself, I think it'll be fine. There's some flaking here, which I'll sand smooth and either put a bit of dolphin glaze on or something to level it out or not. We'll see how it's going to look, but it might be fine without it. Yeah, so keep going on this one, it'll be uh, a while. I'll look at the side where it's um, crazed a little bit more. Uh, we'll look at that when I'm doing it, but yeah, load of this for a while. So much of this stuff we can get all over the camera. So yeah, it's really crazed here. So I just want to see what it comes out like with the sand. I'll just get the, the loose stuff off first. And then I'm going to run over with 180 grit on the sander and see, see what we're going to get. I think um, it's just getting that top stuff off really that's going to be, well, it's going to be the uh, education. Let's have a look.
for the minute, I don't change it, but give or take, that is uh, port side done. Here we are at the last bit of the top side at long last. I'm going to take the name, the last of the three names off to Vita, so she uh, will be nameless for a short amount of time. Brother in law up the top there, Roger. Co owner Roger is uh, doing the deck at the moment, starting to burn off some of the deck. Um, so, yeah, just want to get this last bit done and uh, the top side sanded. So, there we are. Done. I'm chuffed to bits about her being done. On the uh, badder side though, the worst side is the next job is the uh, anti-fail, sanding that off which is going to be brutal, it's horrible. So here we are at the dreaded anti-fail, it's going to be the worst job I think on this boat entirely so I'm not going to film a great deal of it just because it's going to be so dusty. Um, I've got a decent filter on this um, sander here, the lid does sometimes fall off but what I'm doing is it keeping an eye on that and it does collect a lot of the dust that I can then put in this bucket here just to try and you know keep as much and dispose of it uh, properly as best I can and I've also got a decent proper mask on for this one as well that dust mask I was wearing for the top so it's fine because it's all blowing away but um, this stuff's nasty so in fact it's, it's gone wrong with that but um, yeah so I'll film a little bit of this and uh, yeah there we are As you see, it does come off really easily, but it's just dusty. I'm going to start filling this hull now so that I can um, get ready to um, paint it. So I want to fill, fill these pieces here, these um, pitted pieces, and, um, and a different thing just where the, the odd plank has sort of opened up a little bit, hardly anything at all, but um, I'm going to put putty in there, sort of normal linseed oil putty, um, that, uh, which will not dry incredibly hard so that if the boat does decide to take up it can squeeze it out, it, it won't uh, it won't compress it too bad, whereas this stuff will be quite brittle. This is marine filler, two pack filler. It's just like car body filler, but um, it's uh, marine stuff. So yeah, that's the plan. Just fill, there's a very few of these, not many. Just fill them with some putty um, and then probably still skim them with this two pack filler. But all these parts skim with two pack filler and um, prime it and then sand, well, sand it, then prime it and then it's ready to paint. So I look forward to that now. Let's do this. Just feels that nice.
I ran out of the uh, marine filler, so I'm using this two-pack wood filler, which I'm sure is uh, plenty good enough. Problem with being in the graveyard of the yard, the hose won't reach up here. I was almost forced to use a bucket and sponge. There's a line sort of marked on here, almost it's sort of essentially scored in, uh, lightly scored in. So I'm pretty sure that this is the um, water line here, but it's slightly different level as we come around this corner, and probably on this one. Uh, it's a bit closer on this one, but uh, I'm going to just take it from there and feather it out around. So I'm going to prime the hull um, using this sort of general purpose um, uh, oil based primer, I got it quite cheap in that uh, sale that I got the last paint from and Susanna um, is oil based, um, if, if I'd have bought new primer I'd have bought marine primer, not for any reason except that I just don't really know why it's marine so I'd have bought it um, just to be sure. The reason I'm priming it is because I filled the boat so much. Um, if had it have not been so much filler on the side, it would have been fine just to undercoat the boat. But um, because there is, I'm going to prime a second fill, which will be quite fine filling, hopefully quite fine filling. We'll see when I painted it. And um, spot primer, and then I can undercoat and then top coat. And you know, hopefully she's going to look beautiful. We'll see. But that's the game. Game on.
And so here we are the next day where I've gone a little bit crazy with the fine filling. On the bright side, Roger's here, burning off the deck once again. So whilst I sand this down and get it ready for undercoat, let's have a quick look at what Roger's been doing on the deck. Now comes the somewhat exciting bit of doing this teak, um, sanding this down and making it, uh, getting it revived. So I've been really looking forward to this saving it. It's time now because I'm going to sand it down and um, put some sort of teak reviving stuff on that then needs to be washed down. And I've just second sanded the hull here after I've well, sanded it again after second filling it, and um, I'm going to wash that down as well. So if I sand this down then I can wash the whole lot down and then I can undercoat this and we can actually really start going forward on it because doing the second fill, which was really necessary, it took ages really, so there it is. But yeah, the exciting thing is this teak. Let's see how it comes out. Looks bloody promising, I'll tell you that. I'll give it a sanding pad as well. A bit pointless with the mask there, but there we are. Yeah, I'm gonna go over it like this and um, I'll do the whole run of the boat. I just want to take the edge off the white. That might actually be enough there. Superb. That's what we got if the camera can pick it up. There's an undercoat. I don't know if it's really worthwhile or not, but this um, 
I've got this built Hamber um, Hydrate 80, which is a rust converter, and it's um, absolutely amazing stuff. I used it on my camper van. Um, it sort of converts rust, I don't know what it converts it to, but it makes it not rust anymore, and it sort of seals it, it gives us a sort of coating. So what I'm gonna do is do use this uh, rust converter on here, and then um, put some zinc phosphate uh, primer on it. Um, again, I don't know if it's gonna actually do anything, but it should help it, and then I'll undercoat it, and then, um, and then um, anti-foul. There we have it, a green bow. Um, I really like the colour. I'll show the inspiration. Thank you. Um, I'll show the inspiration behind why I chose this colour um, with this bow that I saw online, which is this one. Um, now, I, I do like that colour. I think that bow looks great. I think with this bow, I think the, the teak when it's all oiled up is going to look fantastic. She will look great. And also, I have to bear in mind, we have to bear in mind that the red that you see won't obviously be be seen it'll be underwater and red and green are complementary colours although they don't really complement each other they um, sort of make each other stand out it's not that they look good together they stand out next to each other and 
so that might be clashing my mind a little bit there's uh, the boot line the tape that I'm about to peel off because it's starting to go off a little bit anyway the masking tape um, but I think perhaps the main maybe the main reason I'm concerned about the green colour is since I painted it a few people have told me green's an unlucky colour you can't po paint a boat green and so that's perhaps got into my head a little bit and so although I like the colour I'm a little bit maybe a little bit anxious about it so I'm going to pull the tape off I'm going to have to think about this a little bit um, you know there are other options and then perhaps I'll show some options that I'm thinking about but um, for now it, I do think she looks great I mean she needs another coat anyway so it's not the end of the world but to change the colour I mean it will need three more coats rather than one more coat but um, well there she is for now I do like it um, my mind's a little bit I don't know and I think it might be because people said it's unlucky and it might have got into my head now Anyway, let's pull the tape off and uh, see if that helps anything. <laughs> 